Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to Unity Game Development. We're going to be adding our project to version control. I'm a Unity certified developer with over 20 years of experience. Uh, my passions include creating game content and educating around it. And I've shipped projects with Unity for console, mobile, PC, and more. I'm available for remote contract hire as a Unity game dev or a Unity game dev instructor. So let's imagine we're in here with Unity and we've gotten started with a project that we're happy with. Now we want to add it to version control. Version control is the industry standard practice for where to back up your game projects. This includes all of your assets, your code, your art, and everything else. So first we browse to github.com and we create a free account. I've already done that. Of course, I have an account already as I've been developing for many years using github.com. So the next step is to create a new repo. A repo is a online folder that is specific to one of your projects typically. So for each Unity project you'd have, you'd expect to have one repo online for that. Up here, we'll click plus and then new repository or new repo. You give that a name like my test repo. You can additionally give it a description, choose if it's publicly available to the world or just privately available to you and any team members you manually add. And there's some other steps here you can do. We just need to give it a name and then we'll go ahead. Create repository. And here at the top, you can see my name and then my test repo. This is the homepage, so to speak, for the repo itself. Now what we need to do is link this online folder with our local machine. There's many ways to do this, but I suggest you get the free GitHub desktop app, which does the linking from your local machine to online. You click here and install that. I've already got it installed, so I'll simply click set up in desktop. The operation for taking that online folder to your local machine is called cloning a repository. The window opens up here pre-populated. I can choose the local path if I wanna put it at a different place. I'll simply put it on my desktop here, which is a great spot for testing. And now we're done. Now, an important factor here is that anytime we do any local changes inside that folder, we wanna come back here to GitHub Desktop and we wanna push those changes back up to the online. It doesn't work like Google Drive on your desktop or Dropbox on your desktop that automatically syncs. You need to make conscious choices anytime you wanna pull from online to your local machine or push from your local machine up to online. So I started this demo showing I already have a Unity project. So what I wanna do is now copy that Unity project into this folder and then commit. So there's many ways I can go about doing this, but I'll start here by right-clicking at the top and I'll choose show in Explorer. It may be slightly different wording on your machine. That shows me on the desktop, I have my test repo and inside of it, it's empty except there's a .git folder. You basically never wanna to touch that folder. It's what contains the link from the online folder to your local machine. So you just don't touch that. What we wanna do is paste anything in here or begin working inside here if you want, and then we'll have those changes ready to be pushed online. I've already got that folder, so let me bring that up. Now, if you've created your own Unity project on your local machine and you click into that folder, you probably see a structure that looks like this. But an important detail here is that when you link your local machine to the online repo, you do not always want all of those files to be synced. Some of them are used by Unity in this case, just locally to help the local caching and uh, optimization of running the Unity editor. These are big bulky files that get regenerated on the client side. You need to know about each technology you're using be it creating a website or creating a Unity game, and the unique aspects of how those operate within Git. If you were to copy all of these folders in, they're automatically going to be synced up to the online, and that's overkill in this case. So Git has this concept of a Git ignore. This is a file that says, hey, don't copy all of the local files. Here's a few of the folders that we want to ignore. And you wanna find a specific Git ignore for the technology you're using. If I look at the parent folder here, we can see a git ignore that comes free if you use the Unity template project, and I'll put a link below. I strongly recommend using this. One of the key distinctions about how I structure this compared to other defaults is that I have 
the Unity folder next to the Git ignore. So I'm going to paste that in. And now that that is pasted in, let's look at the folder a little closely. So again, everything we see here is possibly going to be committed online. That's the Git folder that we mentioned is instructions just for Git. We generally don't touch anything inside of that. Then we have the Unity folder, which as I mentioned before, has some files that we want to push online and some that we do not. And then here's a git ignore folder. Let's take a look at this. This comes free with the Unity template project if you choose to use that. If I open it up, it doesn't quite look like code, but it's more of a list of files and folders, including asterisks to be a wildcard, capturing more results if we want them. And it's written in this somewhat weird language that is part of git ignore. So notice that each of them start with Unity because in my structure, the base git folder then has a Unity folder and then has other results. If that doesn't match your structure, then you need to think about that and maybe make an adjustment here. But again, if you use my Unity template, this is done for you already. You can simply go to GitHub Desktop and see what gets committed. So every time you click into GitHub Desktop, and then from up here, you choose one of your repos, it will automatically show all of the changes that are about to be synced. There is some color coding and some nice documentation online to help you understand that color coding, but green means something new. Makes sense. We started with an empty GitHub repo, and then we're adding a bunch of new files. So we can see everything starts with Unity slash, Let's go down and see if there's anything that doesn't have Unity slash in it. Okay, no, so that sounds good. Again, let's compare this to the folder. And here in the folder, we can see we've got the Unity slash I mentioned. There are two exceptions, I, I missed them at the top. The git ignore itself is going to be submitted and this readme file. The readme file is a simple text file that explains what your project is about. It's optional, but I recommend including one. So let's go ahead and do a commit there. So now that we have all this stuff ready to go, we don't have to do anything other than just browse through these visually, make sure there's no files we don't want to commit. And as far as what you should and shouldn't commit, you can Google something like git ignore for Unity projects, and you can see. But again, if you use the Unity template project that I've included and talked about here, this is done for you. So down here, you're required to put some sort of a commit message this will later sit in a long history of all the changes you've ever done for your file. So doing something that's clear and understandable is nice. I like to start with initial commit, which is a bit vague, but at least points it out that this is the first one. Now we'll hit commit to main here, and that's going to commit all of this on to the online version of the repo. Then a key second step here is that we need to publish or push. So we will publish these online. Now, how can we validate that what we've done matches our expectations? Well, we have a history tab here, so we can see all of the different commits or all of the different movements of code from local to online. And we can see that initial commit we just did is there. And here's the full history if you wanted to browse through it. That's one way. You could also right click here and open, let's see, view on GitHub. So by doing that, we can just double check. What we're looking at here is our local machine. When we click on this, we'll be looking at the online version of that same folder. So here we see my name, because that's me logged in, my test repo, and inside I see a Unity folder, a Git ignore, and a readme. Now that readme, we didn't really mention, what it is, but it's just a text file that is Markdown compliant. So it's something like HTML Lite, and it allows you to specify more details about your project. That's a really helpful place to describe what the intention of your project is, maybe link to some other related projects, articles, YouTube videos, whatever helps tell your story. And of course, if you want, you don't have to have this file or you could have it be empty as you begin your project. But if you use the Unity template project that I mentioned, that, that comes with this stuff for free, which I always use for every one of my projects. So that's it. We've seen how to start with the Unity project, how to create a GitHub account, create a repo, link the local folder to that repo, and then commit and verify that everything we've done is uh, matching local and online.
That's it. Thanks very much.